I feel like I have waited way too long to make this video. I've been in Australia for well over two years. Okay, it is time an American learns about AFL. G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Caitlin. I'm an American living in beautiful Sydney, Australia, and I have never seen an AFL game. I haven't been to an NRL game yet either, but at least I've watched a few matches and know how NRL works. AFL, completely foreign to me. I have absolutely no idea what's going on. I don't know who the teams are. Obviously because that I haven't picked a team to support, I have no idea. I'm going into this completely blind. So let's check out the rules of Australian Aussie rules football explained. <laughs> grab a bicky, grab a cuppa, and let's get right into this video. Rules of Australian rules football. Australian rules football, more commonly known as Aussie rules football, is a game played with two teams of 22, with 18 players from each team taking to the field at any one time. 18 players from each team? You have 36 people on the field at one time for one ball. Like, that is a lot. And so what does that mean? You have four people who rotate, or you're not allowed to rotate, and there's like four rookies in case somebody gets hurt? The game is played on an oval field that's generally a maximum of 185 meters by 155 meters. This is by far one of the largest fields of any team. Oh, wow, okay. Longer than the length of an American football field by like a considerable amount. We're talking like tens of yards here, and I know Imperial system, you guys, I'm talking about American fields and whatnot, I'm used to yards. On each side, it's almost an extra half a football field from the looks of it. And that's not even talking lengthwise, I'm talking widthwise. That is a lot. Team sports, and players have to be extremely fit in order to cover this much ground. These are the goal squares, the centre square and centre circle, and there are two 50 metre lines arched around the goal posts at each end of the field. So now that I think about it, it does make sense that they have 36 players on the field at any given time if the field is that big. That is... that's massive. Pay attention now, as these lines are important. The game starts with a ball up in the centre square. The object of the game is for your team to score more overall points than the opposing team. To score, a player must try and kick the ball through the middle two posts. If you successfully kick the ball through the middle two posts, this is a goal and is worth six points. If you hit one of the goal posts, if the ball is deflected by another player through the goal posts, or if you kick it between a long goal post and a short behind post, this is known as a behind and this only scores one point. So wait, even if there's an opposing player who manages to grab the ball or block the ball at that point, it, you still only get one point? Or like if they deflect it and it doesn't go through the goal post, do you actually get a point? That part confuses me because it's like, okay, if you have the boundaries and stuff that are set up right there, what if the player from the opposing team is behind the boundaries and then knocks the ball out. Does that still count? Maybe they'll clarify that's the part where like right now it's not quite computing. But let me know in the comments if they don't say anything because I'm sure there are plenty of AFL fans in the comments down below. The game is played in four 20 minute quarters for a combined playing time of 80 minutes. So the team with the highest amount of points from goals and behinds at the end of time wins. So is it like American football where they take a lot of commercial breaks and whatnot in between? Is it more like the NRL is here where you kind of go by halves and the first quarter goes right into the second quarter and it doesn't stop for any breaks? Or do you have like proper actual breaks in between each quarter? Kicking the ball through a couple of goalposts for 80 minutes? That sounds dead easy. Well, not so much. <laughs> Standing in your way are 18 members of the opposing team who are trying to take the ball away from you so that they can score themselves. They are allowed to block kicks, intercept the ball, push you off the field, or tackle you by grabbing you below the shoulders and pull you to the floor. If they do tackle you, they are awarded a free kick from the spot of the tackle. To move the ball up the field, you have to be quick and you have to dispose of the ball before an opponent tackles you. So wait, if somebody tackles you, they get the ball? Is it like if they tackle you so many times or somebody just tackles you once and they automatically get the ball because my God, the amount of back and forth that would go back, that would be insane. But also really like, up the ante and up the energy though if like every single time somebody got tackled then you then have to return the ball i feel like you need to actually get an afl game and see what the hell goes on or by kicking it in any direction running with it so long as you bounce so you can kick the ball in any direction so you can kick it in front of you you can kick it behind you, you can kick it to the side why is there so much kicking in this <laughs> i know football but i'm also thinking it's from the looks of it, it's similar to rugby. As somebody who doesn't understand the sport at all, it looks really, really similar to rugby, and in rugby you're constantly, like, throwing it behind you. Kicking it's interesting. 
hits it on the floor at 15 meters, or handballing the ball where you strike the ball with clenched fist to a teammate. Throwing the ball is absolutely not allowed in Australian rules football, and your opponent will be awarded a free kick if you do. That doesn't sound so easy anymore. Is there any other way of moving the ball up the field? Yes, there is. The saving grace for your team is called the mark. If you kick the ball in the air 15 meters or more, and a teammate catches it without the ball bouncing on the ground, this is known as a mark or marking the ball. The player is then awarded a free kick from that spot and cannot be touched by an opponent for 10 seconds. If a mark is made within your team's forward 50 arc, you are awarded 30 seconds to take your free kick. If 10 or 30 seconds has expired without you making the kick, the umpire will call play on and the opponents are free to try and take the ball off you. Hold on, what? What? The game is a back and forth affair full of marks, handballs, runs, goals, behinds and free kicks. What's with the jumping though? Like, are people allowed to tread on each other and jump up and get the ball? I hope they get into that because that is something I've only seen in AFL and I don't understand it at all. Like, how is it? How can you jump on people like that? But there's a few other things that you'll need to understand before playing or going to a game. For example, specky. This is Australian slang for spectacular mark. You're not allowed to push anyone in the back, but if there's a marking contest and an opponent is standing in your way, you are allowed to use his back for leverage to try and catch the ball for a mark. This could result- You can just jump on somebody's back. What the? Who came up with this? What is going on? You could jump on somebody's back, on your opponent's back. It's not even like your teammates. You... What the hell, Australia? Built in gravity-defying plays for the ball. Interchange. A team is allowed to interchange up to three players per game. Very similar to football, the players must wait in the interchange area and players must enter or exit at the designated areas. The maximum number of interchanges is 120. There is also one substitute in case of injury. 50 meter penalty. So do they decide ahead of time who's going to be the substitute? Like, does the substitute just have to sit there, or can the substitute also interchange with other people during the game? If you're stupid enough to commit any of these infractions, the umpire... 50 meter penalties, that's a long distance. ...it will award a 50 meter penalty against you, and the other team will gain possession from the spot where the umpire has marked 50 meters. This is a huge disadvantage, as games can be lost from kicks resulting in penalties. Kicks after the siren. If a player marks the ball and the siren goes off to signify the end of time, the game doesn't end there. You are allowed to take the kick. Any point scored from this kick counts. Games have been won, or in St Kilda's case, lost from a kick after the final siren. To the uninitiated, Aussie rules football seems very complicated, but once you understand the rules, it becomes a great sport to watch. I'll definitely give this video a like. I learned quite a bit from it, so very, very useful. I feel like I understand AFL a little bit, like a tiny bit. I feel like it's one of those... I think like with most sports, you have to actually go to a game or watch a game on TV with somebody who knows the sport, who also has the patience to explain it to you. <laughs> Thank God Mark has patience or I would not have understood NRL at all. That's interesting. Let me know if your team is down below in the comments, you guys. I want to see who's supporting what, how many supporters we've got for different teams. I, I've heard but I can't remember the name of the t Sydney team. Like I had it on the tip of my tongue and just totally escaped me. But let me know who you guys support in AFL down below or if you're not an AFL person, let me know because um, I'm kind of curious. I've seen that there's like this little bit of a division that like the east part of the country really supports NRL more than AFL. Whereas because NRL isn't in the western part of the country, specifically like in Western Australia and I think South Australia, they're more prone to being AFL fans because obviously NRL isn't out there. At least there's no teams from there. Yeah, I'm learning a lot about footy. I'd never thought I would learn that much, but hey, you know what? This was actually a really, really good video, and I'd love the opportunity to actually get to go to an AFL game at some point. <laughs> if you guys have any other videos you want me to react to, pop on over to Discord and let me know. I'm always looking for suggestions. Just please, if you can, try to keep them under 10 minutes long because I do a lot of talking in those reaction videos. And if you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button down below. I really do appreciate the support, you guys, and I will see you all in my next video.